Yo Brenner was a legendary actor known for his distinctive bald head and commanding presence on the silver screen. He was celebrated for his performances in films such as The Ten Commandments and The Magnificent Seven, and for his award-winning portrayal of King Monka of Siam in the Broadway production of The King and I. However, despite his larger-than-life persona, Brenner's personal life was marked by tragedy and turmoil. In this article, we delve into the details of what really happened to this iconic actor, uncovering a story that is as fascinating as it is heartbreaking. Having been born on July 11, 1920 in Vladivostok, Russia, he was named Yuli Borisvok Brenner. His father, Boris Brenner, was a mining engineer and investor of Swiss German and Russian descent, while his mother, Mauricia Dmitrievna, was an aspiring actress and singer. Yul's family life was tumultuous from the start. When he was just three years old, Boris fell in love with an actress and abandoned his family. Left to fend for themselves, Yul, his mother, and his older sister, Vera, made the move to China, where they were educated in a young men's Christian association school. As a young boy, Yul showed a talent for music and performance. In fact, he often played his guitar in nightclubs during his family's time in Paris, where they had moved in 1932 out of fear of war between China and Japan. But Yul had other talents too. For five years, he worked as a trapeze acrobat as part of a French circus troupe, dazzling audiences with his skill and grace. Unfortunately, a back injury sidelined him from that possible career. In 1940, he and his family moved to America. During World War II, a young Yul Brenner found himself working for the U.S. Office of War Information as a French-speaking radio announcer broadcasting to occupied France. Despite his wartime duties, Yul still managed to find time to pursue his passion for acting. He studied under Russian teacher Michael Chekhov in Connecticut, honing his craft for the stage. In 1941, Yule landed a small role in a Broadway production of Shakespeare's Twelfth Night, which was followed by another small role two years later in The Moonvine. However, his big break would come in 1946, when he landed a much larger part in the production of Lute Song. Despite his success on stage, Yule was also making a name for himself in television. He appeared on various anthology shows, and even began directing and producing them as well. He worked on several shows in the early 50s, including Studio One, Starlight Theater, The Robert Q. Lewis Show, We Take Your Word, Sure as Fate, Mr. I Imagination, and Danger. Although he found success in television, Yule's true passion remained on the stage. He eventually returned to Broadway to star in the hit musical The King and I. The show was based on the novel Anna and the King of Seam and tells the story of what happens when the King of Seam brings a widow into his home to serve as the governess of his children. Both critics and audiences loved the show, and Yul's portrayal of the King of Seam became one of his most iconic roles. As Yul Brenner continued to perform in The King and I, he was asked if it was difficult to keep his performance fresh every night. He replied, it's not so much of a problem for me. By September 1951, The King and I had become a sensation, and Yule was offered a multi-picture deal with Paramount Pictures. He made an impressive start with his movie career by being cast in the role of Ramesses II in director Cecil B. DeMille's second version of The Ten Commandments. DeMille visited Yule backstage between acts of the show and offered him the part. Yule was impressed by the tremendous amount of research that had been done on the picture, and he agreed to do The Ten Commandments with DeMille, as well as another movie following it. In 1956, Yule had a tremendous year at the box office. He starred in the film version of The King and I, alongside Deborah Kerr in the role of Anna Leon Owens. The movie was nominated for nine Academy Awards, winning five in the categories of Best Actor, Best Art Direction, Best Costume Design, Color, Best Music, Scoring of a Musical Picture, and Sound Recording. It was also nominated for Best Picture, Best Actress, Best Director, and Best Cinematography, Color. As Yul Brynner's film career continued to gain momentum, he landed the role of Ramesses II in director Cecil B. DeMille's epic film, The Ten Commandments. The film, which boasted a cast of thousands, including Anne Baxter, Edward G. Robinson, and Vincent Price, was a massive success, grossing more than any other film in 1956. Yule's role in the Ten Commandments solidified his status as a major Hollywood player. 
Yule's success continued into 1958 with the brothers Karamazov and the Buccaneer, which saw him teaming up again with Charlton Heston. However, not all of Yule's films were hits. He co-starred with Deborah Kerr again in 1959's The Journey, but the film failed at the box office. The same year, he starred in The Sound and the Fury, which also failed to connect with audiences. In the 1960s, Yule starred in 18 movies, including the critically acclaimed The Magnificent Seven, which was a western version of the film Seven Samurai. However, the film did not do well in America. Yule's success was inconsistent during the rest of the decade, with only 1966 Return of the Seven being a success. Yul Brynner's career had its ups and downs, but he never stopped acting. After a string of box office hits in the 1950s and early 1960s, he struggled to find his footing in the late 1960s and 1970s. In 1972, he starred in the TV series Anna and the King, but it was cancelled after just 12 episodes. However, his luck began to turn around in 1973 with his role in the film Westworld. He played a malfunctioning, deadly gunslinging robot and his performance helped make the movie a success. He went on to play a similar role in The Ultimate Warrior and returned briefly to westerns for 1976 Future World. His final film was Death Rage, an Italian action film released in the same year. He returned to his role as the King of Seam in a 1977 to 1978 Broadway run, followed by a 1979 London production and a 1981 to 1983 tour. He even returned to Broadway in 1985, winning the Tony Award for Best Actor for the second time for his portrayal of the King of Seam. Yul Brynner, the legendary actor known for his powerful performances, had a full and complex personal life. He was a talented photographer and even authored books featuring his photographs. Throughout his life, he was married four times to Virginia Gilmore, Doris Kleiner, Jacqueline Theon de la Chambre and Kathy Lee, with whom he remained until his death in 1985. Yule was a dedicated father who adopted two children and fathered three. However, his personal life was also marked by a dangerous habit. He began smoking at the young age of 12 and was a heavy smoker for many years. Although he quit in 1971, the damage to his health had already been done. In 1983, Yule was diagnosed with lung cancer a disease that ultimately claimed his life on October 10, 1985, at the age of 65. Despite his illness, he remained committed to sharing an important message with his fans and the public, the dangers of smoking. Before his passing, he recorded an anti-smoking commercial that was broadcast on all major television networks just a few days after his death. Yul Brynner's legacy as an actor and public figure continues to inspire and move people around the world. His talent, passion, and dedication to important causes remain an inspiration to this day. As we say goodbye to this legend, we honor his contributions to the world of film and his impact on our culture. Goodbye legend actor Yul Brynner. Thanks for watching and see you on our next video.